Hi, my name is Kevin Hiddle. I'm the digital learning designer in the Office of Curriculum Assessment and Teaching Transformation. Joining me today is SUNY Distinguished Professor Christopher Cohan from the Department of Pathology and Anatomical Sciences at the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences. Thanks for joining me, Chris. It's great to be here, Kevin. Uh, how's the semester going so far? Uh, with the move to Brightspace, has everything been going well for you? Uh, it's been a learning experience, I have to say, with Brightspace. Uh, you know, a couple of new twists and turns there and some things that uh, weren't expected, but uh, you know, uh, getting used to it and everything's working out so well for the class, uh, getting access to all the materials that are there. Awesome. Great. Glad to hear it. Um, so let's dive right in. You're, you teach uh, the neuroscience course, which is for second year medical students uh, at the med school. Um, and it's long been one of the most highly rated classes by the students. Um, can you tell me a little bit about its evolution and um, what led you to redesign the course and turn it into um, its current blended learning format? It started out with a pretty traditional teaching format with lecture, although we've always incorporated a lab into it. Um, it was one of the few courses in the med school that still kind of retained its lab along with gross anatomy. Uh, and the lab was nice because it provided uh, a time where students can interact with one another, discuss, um, take advantage of self-directed learning. And uh, it was like that for many years when we were on the South Campus. And uh, eventually it evolved into something that's completely different now, which is um, very much reduced amount of lecture during class time, where most of the class time is spent with the students in small group where they're discussing um, the course content and material with one another. Research has shown that active learning uh, is more effective instructional mode than traditional lecture-based classes. Um, so, you know, given what you know at the science of learning, uh, how, do, how has that impacted your, your pivot into its current format and the technologies you've decided to use? Um, so a few years ago, I decided to completely change the format of the class. And that was to provide a lot more time for students to um, problem solve with one another to interact in small groups as opposed to their spending all the class time learning course content. And there aren't a lot of ways to do that. If you want to do that, you have to pretty much move the learning component or learning acquisition part out mm -hmm. of class time and then make room for using class time for student discussion. So uh, that was pretty much a complete redesign of the course, which I uh, started several years ago. And in order to do that, you have to provide the means for students to do their learning outside of class time because you're not lecturing to them mm -hmm. during class time. And um, we had some materials to take advantage of that. There are a couple of ways to do that. You can provide and create videos for the students to watch of your lectures. And then um, that would be the way that they would be learning um, the course content. Uh, that was kind of difficult. They didn't have the videos to use. And I thought that would be kind of a long process uh, that might be difficult, mm -hmm. plus the fact that there are other people teaching with me and getting everybody to make videos of their right. own content would be difficult. And so mm -hmm. we were able to take advantage of an online text resource that had all of the information that, in our case, the medical students needed to learn. And th those are uh, provided by a company called Scholar RX, and they're called BRICS. They're basically um, ways to build knowledge. And there are uh, online chapters in each of the topics that we would normally teach that made available for the students. And so we took advantage of that for the students to be able to access that online outside of class. So they have to prepare that material before they come to class. And then when they come to class, um, we have a lot more time that's spent with them in small group discussion, uh, doing problem solving. You've been teaching for a while and you know, it seems like the demographics of education are, are changing. In 2015, the National Center for Education Statistics had reported that 74% of all undergraduate students meet at what, at least one untraditional demog or, uh, characteristic. So, you know, they're, they have dependents, they're married, um, they're, um, you know, they're, they're older than the, the, the typical student. Um, have, have you noticed that in your teaching? And um, how do you feel moving to this um, blended modality and utilizing technology supports those learners. Yeah, I think that tr transition has been pretty abrupt. And I, I saw that transition when we moved downtown, I guess in about 2018, 2019. And um, 
something to do with either the new facilities and the students coming in at that point. It just uh, made me realize so much that the students are thinking about their education differently these days. Um, they're much more independent. They want to learn in ways that they choose to learn and when they choose to learn. And so um, the, the change in format of the course was nice because it went along with that. It moved a lot of the um, content learning acquisition outside of the classroom time so they could access it when they wanted to mm -hmm. in the ways they wanted to um, and uh, made a lot more room for that. Um, so it gave them a lot more freedom uh, for them to decide on how they wanted to learn and the times they wanted to do it. What gains have you seen in your students learning uh, through the, you know, through this redesign and the use of technology? Have you, um, you know, statistically, is there any difference? Have you noticed things just in the, um, your conversations with students? Um, how, how are things changing? So that's a difficult thing to uh, estimate because we, you know, we can see how the class performs on exams and that's pretty much remained pretty stable throughout, but we didn't really know how the students are using that material later on. But I have to say one thing that I, um, information that I've gotten and feedback is from students who finish the class and finish second year and then are preparing for their step one national board exam. And uh, a lot of them just tell me, oh, they have hardly had to review any of the content from the course, you know, maybe a day or two, uh, just because they feel like they've learned the material so well. What advice would you give to faculty across the university, across, you know, just the higher ed landscape um, who want to better utilize technology in their courses. So there are some great things available. Um, I know everybody has uh, their own skills for doing things, but just take advantage of uh, UB Learns as a repository. One thing that when I developed the website, um, I realized that it was a great help to students to accumulate information there, which classes use every year. But without that, students have to um, recreate that on their own every year when they transition from uh, one course to the next. Then it would be great to have a repository where you could have templates available for mm -hmm. them to use, things that could facilitate their learning. Um, and that's one of the things I wanted to do with the website, but they can take advantage of UB Learns. Um, to store those kinds of documents so mm -hmm. that uh, each class can take advantage of that immediately. And it's great that with uh, you know moving to, to Brightspace, moving content from one year to the next is so much simpler and you can you know develop that robust repository of information um, from year to year. Yeah, another thing that people can do, I'll just kind of mention that, uh, take advantage of Panopto. It's very mm -hmm. easy to sit at your computer, make a video um, you know, for something that you would lecture on a few different days, provide that to the students to look at ahead of time, and then you can open up that class period instead of presenting the content at that time for a student discussion on what they had prepared. Yeah, great advice. Yeah. So um, just overall, how are you feeling as an educator? You've made lots of changes. Um, it seems like you, you're, you're not happy with the status quo. You keep trying new things and tweaking. Um, how do you feel? Uh, I feel pretty good now um, that We've been able to evolve the present format for several years and to see that it's really working well. Um, you know, but every year I, I look at things and say, uh, you know, why did I do it that way? I should be doing it this way. And there are always adjustments to make, um, not huge ones, but just ways to help things run more smoothly. Uh, you know, I'm always in contact with the students, uh, asking them uh, what their needs are and how things are working out. And so that provides uh, great feedback for me to make changes along the way. Um, and you know, I keep changing things that are available on the website, putting new tutorials there. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's a challenge for me to learn how to do that um, and um, to make sure things stay current. But um, it, it's a process that I look forward to of constant improvement.